Hey guys, this is Blue Productions here with another uh, Creator Spotlight video. Last time I had a lot of fun uh, talking with Derek. I think I learned a lot from our conversation. Um, and so I thought I'd do it again with another person you might recognize from the Total Drama Reunion Project. His name is Michael. Um, and actually we've already done, <laughs> we already filmed this interview like a few weeks ago, but I, when I was in the editing process, I realized there was some like really bad audio issues and it just, it, it didn't go well. So uh, Michael was very gracious and agreed to do a re-record. So here we are. Um, so Michael, if you want to say hi to everyone, <laughs> introduce yourself to the, to the viewers. Buenos dias, mi amigos. This is Alejandro Buros Muertos. Uh, and this is okay. Michael Kim. <laughs> I'm uh, 19 years old. I live in Orange County currently, and I go to Chapman University, top five film schools in the U.S. Um, and um, I, what else? What else? Oh, and I run a YouTube channel called Insta Michael TV. So happy to be here. Nice. Yeah. And guys, I just like Derek. I'll link his YouTube channel uh, in the description, and then also. Uh, it'll pop up in the video. So if whenever you guys are done watching this, uh, please take the time to check out his channel because it's definitely it's definitely worth the watch, the sit through. So yeah, definitely check definitely it out. Definitely active. Yes. Three videos a year. <laughs> yeah. um, so speaking of your YouTube channel, just to start out, uh, you have been doing YouTube for a lot longer than I have. Um, and I know we already discussed all this because this is our second attempt. <laughs> so I'm just wondering, like, <clears throat> personally, what was it, what made you want to get into, like, start posting online? And uh, how, how young were you when you started that channel? Because you've got, like, a lot of, you've got a lot of videos. So what, what was it, what kind of made you start wanting to do that? So I started like, uh, I think it was off book, November 13th, 2013. This was when, or it might've been November 27th, 2013. This was right after I just turned 13. Uh, wow. And I thought that's like the time when, you know, YouTube allows you to start a channel. So, yeah. And I think that's a lot, when I started out, my first few videos were extremely cringy, but they were like, um, basically skits and comedy, like comedy skits, cause I was very big on uh, Smosh and Ryan Higa, uh, Niga Higa. You guys know who they are, right? Yeah. I'm sure they do. <laughs> you know, right, Blue? My audience tends to skew kind of young, so. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, so I started with that and then I slowly morphed into whatever I was watching at the time on YouTube, I would almost like kind of replicate what they, they were doing because I I thought they were so cool. Um, like for example, after Niga Higan Smosh kind of died, um, I went into Lego stop motion brick films because I started watching Force Fire 101. Do you know him, Blue? Uh, I'm not familiar, but I will say I used to do like, I used to be obsessed with Lego Star Wars and I used to like try to make like those stop motion films too when I was younger, but I was, I was not as good at it as you are, so. Um, What's like your biggest set that you have right now? Do you have the Death Star? I don't have any of them anymore, but I think ah. the biggest, I always wanted the Death Star, but it was like 300 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> I, yep. I didn't have the money for that. So um, I think the biggest I had was like a Starship or something. It was like Anakin Skywalker's uh, like Jedi Starship. The Was it yellow? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Okay. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, that one's from good. From the, the Clone Wars show. I yes, to... I have that one too. It's oh, great. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was like my first like big one. So that was exciting. What about you? Oh, I was, uh, I mean, I had Star Wars, but my biggest passion because uh, <clears throat> of Force Fire 101, I was a big Lego Batman fan. And oh. I had a, a lot of, uh, I know you're a DC fan, so you would know, but the Batcave set from 2006, you know, that one that's like a thousand dollars now. I want that. I remember so seeing that bad. in the catalog too, and I wanted that, but again, yeah. like, why is Lego so expensive? Like, it, that hasn't changed. It's still expensive. Oh, it sucks. Yeah, well, I think that's what's great about like those like small little projects 
we do as kids, like for you is like the stop motion, uh, the Lego stop motion movies. Um, it's like, you know, it's obviously amateur, but, and, I, and I've told you this before, but it, it, it kind of like speaks to something deeper because like when you make that kind of really small, like low budget thing, like you can tell it like comes from the heart, like there's, you know, so, and I, I think it's almost more special that way. So I, I, I always think it's cool to like watch those kinds of amateur films. You've also done a few like short, more uh, professional, shall we say, short films. Um, one of which I watched recently. Uh, I, I'm really glad that you recommended to me, which um, was called Regretful, which I thought, first of all, I was really impressed by the cinematography. Cinema. Uh, um, is that uh, cinematography? I that's not really something I'm an expert in. But when when you approach like the movie making process, how do you figure out how you're gonna set up like certain shots? Like how does that? How do you figure all that out in your head? I've always wondered. Well, well uh, it's a lot like animation, where like the storyboard comes in handy for lining up shots. It's the same process with live action, but I'm I'm not a drawer like you are, so I did stick figures for most of it. But then, um, yeah, honestly, uh, for that example, regretful. That was just a short, like a, a horror thriller that we did because it was for film CSSA. It's like this really exclusive film summer program, but really just like the rich kids get in there. But right. um, <laughs> I didn't get in for that for that film, but. I really enjoyed it. Um, that didn't answer your question, by the way. Film, the cinematography was. So you start you start the process with storyboarding, basically. Right, and then you take your camera and you line it up the way that you want it to look like in the storyboard. So that's pretty much. So you it. basically like you decide each shot like how you want it to look in the storyboard, and then okay, see like that's what I'm bad at. I like. Whenever I create stuff, like I always skip the storyboard process. I don't know why. It's, I feel like once you, when you have that, like it, it makes everything look a lot more polished. Um, so I, I definitely need to like, it's a bad habit. Like I should start doing more storyboarding, but <laughs> yeah, I just, I feel like I tend to kind of wing it. Um, and I can tell that that's not what you do from watching your videos, like your videos are definitely a lot more polished. Your hammer work is obviously much better in my opinion. Um, Thank you. Do you do you feel like you have like your own unique process uh, at all? Like beyond storyboarding, like just from like the very beginning stage, like just thinking up like a story, like just in your head, like brainstorming, talk me through your entire process. Cause I'm curious to know, since you mentioned you study Filmmaker, you're studying filmmaking in college. So what's your process? I would say that the thing is I mess up a lot. I noticed Derek talked a lot about this in his video as well. It's that he tends to upload a lot of stuff that he's not proud of later on and deletes it. That's the same process that I have where a lot of the stuff that's left on the channel is just stuff that I was like can stay up, but I would cut out, especially like not just amateur looking projects, but I used to do a lot more like edgier comedy. And I think honestly, that's probably not the best for, you know, public image, especially in today's day. So I <laughs> had to cut those out. I did I did music videos for, for a while too, but those are all wow. gone. All right. they, were really, they were really edgy mm. and not good. <laughs> I mean, I think we, we all like have stuff for, you know, like, when you're making it like you think it's going to be like super awesome and then you it's finished and like you watch watch it back and you just like yeah it's you get you do not sometimes it just doesn't go well and so yeah i can relate to that um, I, I i i like want to say that it's like for me that's like already so much pressure but i can't imagine how you you have to go through this because you have an actual like humongous following so if you if you post something you regret, there's gonna be like maybe 10k people who see immediately, unlike me who can cut have maybe an hour to cut cut it off. Yeah, it's 
It's definitely something that I struggle with. Um, I think for me, like I, if I'm creating something and I feel like maybe it's just, it's not like turning out the way that I want it to, um, I tend to just like not finish it. Like I'll just completely abandon it. I, I feel like I'm sort of a perfectionist in that way. And that, like everything has to be like up to my standards the whole way through in order for me to like actually be okay with posting it publicly. Um, I don't think that's a good way to do things. Like, I think it's better to just put stuff out there no matter how you feel about it. Cause that's how you improve. Um, yeah, but my, my way of doing things is definitely, I would not recommend <laughs> to other people. <laughs> ah. So yeah, you mentioned like you, you do a lot of different, you've done a lot of different types of filmmaking. You have another video that's sort of animated. I think you mentioned your little brother animated it. Um, Animates a loose term, but yeah. Yeah, it was called, hold on, what was it called? The Gifted Life. The Gifted Life, right. Um, I, um, I'll, I'll leave a link to it in the description for you guys to check out. Just That's unironically my, be my best video. <laughs> I think it's definitely- Okay, oh, sorry, keep going, I interrupted great. you. Yeah, no, you're fine. Um, I think all of your videos are great, but I think that one is definitely a standout. Uh, what what made you want to do that? Because it's it's definitely very personal. Um, you talk about how uh, you sort of changed when you moved from South Korea and you moved to California and you sort of uh, your parents supported your interests and you kind of talk about what what kind of stood out to me is when you talked about how you wanna, you're very uh, focused on wanting to make your parents proud and uh, wanting to fulfill that sort of need. I, I, I can definitely relate to that. I feel the same way. Um, but yeah, what what kind of drove you to, to create that film? So this was for the Gundance Film Festival, which is a local film festival where I live and um, it was, it was at the time, this was in my senior year of high school. I'm going to be really honest. I was kind of in a bad place. I was not what you would consider popular. I wasn't even a nerd. Actually, I was a loser. Like there's a difference between nerd and loser. Nerds at least have like their group and they're like very like, um, have some sort of interest that's kind of dorky, but I was, I didn't really have anyone. I, I had very bad times like talking to people. I was very introverted. So I would often on top of that, I I, I got bullied. I know what a fuck. <laughs> but anyway, the I talked to my mom a lot because she was like my only friend and, and she would tell me like um to to keep working on the film thing because if I can't go out and like be as extroverted as I want to be, I should at least be talented in my own way. Right. I work on this with my brother and I got it in and I won. And I think the prize was, I got free prom tickets, which is great. <laughs> yeah, that I, I think because it was so personal and you, I can tell like you really poured your heart out into it. Like, I think that's why it works so well. Yeah, wait, where can I check out like your old high school art if that's online? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know any of it is still online. Um, I found I, your old Instagram. So. Yeah, I, well, I never used that, but I used to have a DeviantArt. I don't know if it's still active. But, you... um, yeah, we, we don't talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> Just getting cut from the interview. I, I see that a lot of artists, like actual artists, um, when they tend to they tend to like to look at their audience, like who they are trying to please more often than enjoying the art itself. Right. So when, if, if like for you, like if you were to sketch something uh, just for yourself or fun, I feel like you would enjoy that a lot more than for, for sending it off to someone else to see. What would you say? Yeah, I'm going to be kind of honest here. Um, maybe I shouldn't say this, but I feel like in a weird way, like when you have so many people that are expecting your prod like a product a finished product um even if like like art is my passion 
But when you kind of like monetize that and turn it into a business, I almost feel like you lose some of that spark. And the thrill dies, yeah. It's, it's it's still I still love doing it, but it's almost like there's something missing. I don't know. It it, it feels different, I guess. Um, but yeah, because you can't do what you want anymore. It's what the people want. Yeah, yeah. I guess that's true. Yeah, your you your videos are like super funny, but you also do like some pretty serious stuff. Like you obviously have a lot of range. But I wanted to say basically that if at at this point with my YouTube channel. I've decided that I don't really, uh, how do I phrase this? I, I care about my audience, but I care more about myself being proud. Like Derek said, basically like being proud of the content that you create. Mm-hmm. And it's like the audience are just more there as a side thought for me. I just want to be proud of myself for what I put out. Yeah, I think I think that's the, the right way to go about it. I. I think it's important to like consider, like if you want your channel to be successful, it's important to consider what content might speak more to your audience. But like that shouldn't be the end all be all. Like you should be posting what you want to post, like what what you enjoy. Thank you guys for joining us, uh, listening in on our conversation. Um, I know again, this isn't, this might not be the type of thing some of you were expecting to be on my channel, but I hope at least some of you could Uh, can take something away from what we've talked about. (laughs) Um, But I won't let you guys, I won't force you guys to listen to my voice for any longer, so. (laughs) Subscribe to Blue Productions. Yeah, uh, and also subscribe to Instant Michael TV. Uh, Thank you for joining us. And until next time. See you guys. Bye.